If you're going to be building your own copper cables, your own fiber connections, or working with coax, then you'll need a really good crimper. A crimper is used to pinch the connector onto the end of the cabling. So for coax, you may be pinching or connecting that F connector right to the end of that coax connection. And you can use this for coax. You can use it for twisted pair cabling. There are other crimpers for fiber. Just depends on the type of media that you might be using. This is usually the final step of the process, so you'll run your cable from one end to the other. You'll pull it through a ceiling. You'll pull it through conduit. And then at the very end, you'll want to crimp that connection right to the end of the cable. Inside of the crimper, what's really happening is you're taking the copper connections and you're pushing them into the wire itself, right through the insulation, so that you get a really good, solid electrical connection into the wire. There's also, on the sheath itself for RJ45 and RJ11 connections, you're pushing the plug onto the cable sheath itself to hold it in place so that nobody can come along and pull that cable out accidentally. Before you crimp your connections with RJ45, they look something like this. These are the empty RJ45 shells. And you can see that the copper connections have not been pushed into the wiring insulation itself and into the actual wire. So they're sitting out here ready to be pushed in. If you look carefully, you can see that they're very sharp. So once you put the wire inside of the connector and you crimp them, all of those copper connections will be pushed directly through the insulation and right into the copper itself. There's another section in the back that's designed to be pushed up into the sheath. So that will hold everything in place so that nobody can pull it out. Once we have everything crimped, it looks like this. We can see the connection in the back has been pushed into the sheath and it's holding it in place. The wires themselves are coming out the side. And now you can see the copper has been pushed up into the connection. And now it's making contact with those wires that are inside of the RJ45 connection. A good crimper can make all of the difference. You may have a crimper that has a wire cutter built into it, has some wire stripping tools built into it, and it may have a ratcheting effect so that when you're crimping everything down, it gives you just the right amount of pressure to have the perfect type of crimp on that. You also will want a nice pair of electrician scissors. These are specially designed scissors that are able to cut with a very sharp edge. They might also have little notches on the edge that help you strip the wiring out if you're going to be doing that type of cabling. And they're really the perfect size to have available to cut right through your copper cabling. Before you begin the process of crimping, make sure that you check that you're using the right type of connector for the type of wire that you're using. Some wire might need a connector that has a different type of connection on the inside of that RJ45 connector. Make sure you're using exactly what the manufacturer of the wire says you should be using for your RJ45 or your RJ11 connector. And one thing you may just want to keep working on is practice, practice, practice. These wires are difficult sometimes to work with. You have to cut them to exactly the right length. You have to put them into the connector in exactly the right order, put everything in, and then finally get the crimp done. And it may seem a little awkward at first, but once you do a few of them, it becomes very much second nature. And you can start building your own patch cables, your own crossover cables, and you'll have a lot more flexibility when it comes time to start start wiring out your infrastructure.